Hey, welcome back. In this video, we are drawing the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram of this simply supported beam that has one single point load on it. So first of all, let's draw the free body diagram and then calculate the reaction forces. So we see that AY is equal to 15 kilonewtons and BY is equal to 5 kilonewtons. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to set up our our shear force diagram and we usually the easiest way to do this is to draw it directly below the free body diagram and that way we can see all the key points and uh, and then just work off of those so this is the shear force diagram all right so uh, you know what let's actually let's move this uh, let's move this out of the way because we're gonna be working down here all right so uh, the quickest way to do this is the way that I would recommend going is uh, just draw take a virtual cut anywhere but we'll start from the left hand side so we'll oops um, we'll have our virtual cut here so we have we know our reaction here is going to be 15 kilonewtons and then in order to prevent this from translating we know that the internal shear force here obviously has to be 15 kilonewtons pointing down now when we look at our sign convention for what is a positive shear force when we have a cut on the right hand side of a member like this that's pointing down, then that means we're getting a positive value. So we have the magnitude here is 15, and we have the because the because of the positive sign convention, we know that this is a positive value. So for any distance x that is from zero to two meters, this is going to be exactly what we're experiencing. So we can see here that if we call this, let's just put on 15 there for a, and this is in kilonewtons. Uh, and maybe we'll change the color here. So for the first two meters, we have 15, positive 15 kilonewtons of shear force. Now, what we can do is when we draw the, when we go past two meters, we have to include this in our little free body diagram thing over here. So we draw another free body diagram and we know that we have our 15 kilonewton reaction force pointing up. We know that we have 20 kilonewtons pressing down Right, so this is for distances greater than two meters. And then we're also going to have to have, obviously, an inter internal shear force. So this is from the section from two meters to eight meters, um, where obviously we need, a, yeah, we need a shear force there of five to get that force balance. So 15 plus five cancels out that 20. All right, now when we go and look at our positive sign convention, we're on the, our virtual cut is on the right-hand side of our member, but it is pointing up, and so the positive one points down, so that means that we have a negative five kilonewtons of shear uh, in this section. So for anything, and you can see if we extended this over, we're not applying any extra forces here, so we can just carry this right over to the end. So we're going to see that our, we're gonna have negative, we'll just we drop down here to negative five, and straight over to the end. All right, so that is negative five, and this was positive 15. All right, now for our bending moment diagram, we're going to do the we're going to do the same thing by setting it up below our free body diagram, so we have everything nice and in a row. I'm trying to line it up there nicely, and so this is our bending moment diagram (BMD), and this is in units of kilonewton meters. Now, the, the, the introductory way to solve for a bending moment diagram and the way that uh, your textbook will describe it to you is, uh, is to do it like this. We'll draw the individual free body diagrams and, uh, and we'll calculate the internal moment based on the x position. So we can actually calculate the moment at any position along the x axis. So here we have, uh, we're at, uh, at one meter, x would be, uh, sorry, our moment would be 15. And then at two meters here, our moment would be 30 kilonewton meters. Um, and that's not that's not too bad when it's just simply like from the left-hand side, uh, just approaching a point load with no extra applied loads. But when we get into having some multiple point loads and things like that, it actually gets quite congested. Um, but we can use this to, uh, to calculate for the bending moment at absolutely any position along the x-axis. And you can see here, if we did a whole bunch, you see there's a trend that we just have a straight line here going from 0 up until 30, and then from 0 back down until 30. But if we were to do that for every point, that's just, that's just a lot of work and it's inefficient. What we're really mostly interested in is just uh, some critical points, and those tend to be where, um, where point loads are or also where distributed loads start and end. 
Um, so the faster way that we can do this, instead of doing all of these, uh, instead of doing all of these long equations, what we can do is I'll just draw our, um, I'll just draw the exact same bending moment diagram, uh, but we'll just do it in a, two steps that are way quicker. So if we just label this here, bending moment diagram. Um, the bending moment diagram, all it really is, is the is if you integrate the shear force diagram, then you get the the change in the bending moment diagram. So the if we take the, to integrate this is just taking the area under this curve, and it's uh, so it's 15 times that distance was I believe it was uh, it was two meters there, and the other one is six meters. So 15 times two is 30, and that's the magnitude of change in the bending moment diagram. And in a in a system like this where we have hinges on each end. Well, hinges can't resist any moment, so the bending moment, the internal moment at these pins or hinges has to be equal to zero. So we know that we start at zero at that hinge and we end at zero. And then we this is a positive area of 30, so we just it'll just gonna bump us up to 30. And where there's no applied uh, where there's no distributed load, it's just going to be a linear change just like that. So from zero to 30. It just helps us climb if we're going in the positive direction. Now for this area, it's on the negative side, so it's going to push us back towards the negative side. So we have a negative 5 times the length was 6, that gives us 30, and that just brings us back. So we, we drop down 30, so we go from 30 back down to 0. And uh, that's the way that I like to drop any moment diagrams. Uh, so if this, gets, if this starts getting really cluttered with lots of point loads and distributed loads, uh, you'll, you'll be able to construct the shear force diagram using these diagrams. Um, but then the bending moment diagram, instead of doing the longhand equations, it's actually a lot quicker just to integrate and find the changes.